all the boys are heading out again. We've just come in on, on Cape Conway. Hey, mate. Thanks, Good Rich. Good luck, boys. Thanks, Rich. Perfect. And He's left us with a few fish. Exactly. We caught a whole pile of different species, didn't we? There we was did. gurnard, there was uh, obviously these, these beautiful blue spot flathead. Now, what are you going to cook up for us today? Fish and chips. Fish and chips. Good old fish and chips with the VB and the batter. It doesn't really get much better when you've got a fish straight out of the water and good quality batter and we're just going to do this uh, quite simply. But there's a few things to know about the batter. There's something I can cook? Yeah, you can definitely do it. It's a good family friendly one and even in the outdoors we can knock it up on a little one burner here. So Beautiful, alright. We're going to get stuck in. So two great fillets of uh, blue spotted flathead there. We're waiting for our oil to come up to temp and in the meantime we've got a tartare sauce here that I've put together at the restaurant. Gosh, that looks fantastic. Conventional tartare sauce is always made on mayonnaise so I wanted to put it with yogurt. Okay. Just because it's naturally acidic. So there's that and then the chips here that we've done. The way we do it is we take dirty sabagos. They gotta be dirty because the boys have gotta work. God, <laughs> right. yes. you're a hard boss. <laughs> and then we cut them in chips. Yep. And then we do a par blanche in the deep fryers and cook them until they develop this skin around the outside. Then by the time you get to that time of frying at 180, 190, then they go really golden and crunchy and that's when you get those little end bits that okay, are golden. They stand up yeah, and yeah. move around and they're all crunchy. We've got 200 grams of rice flour. Yep. Yeah got 100 grams of self-raising, which helps to make your, your batter nice and light and fluffy. Baking powder, five grams, just for an additional boost. The magic ingredient, Russian rocket fuel, <laughs> Karloff vodka. Oh, wow. It's like 2 a.m. in the morning somewhere. Yeah. And a bit of honey. The honey adds a little sweetness. Mainly it's because we're not using as much beer from a regular recipe, and we just dissolve that into the vodka. Wow. So by adding a little bit of honey, what we've found was that we were able to get like a golden kind of beautiful colour. How many mistakes have you made along the way <laughs> to actually get to this point? <laughs> we've burnt through a lot of vodka, that's for sure. <laughs> we through a lot of vodka. <laughs> yeah. That honey's gone into the vodka now, and we're going to add in that 175 grams of vodka, and we get all that honey in. And then if you want to crack that VB, <laughs> we go. been rocking around on the Cape Conway all morning. So we're going to take 275 mil. And, and why beer? It. Why beer? Why? Well, the yeast that it has, you know, when you take that first bite of fish, it's like, oh, wow. So it needs to be sort of mixed, but not overly. Yeah, you don't want to make it <laughs> super fine. So that's lovely. We've just thrown a couple of chips in there now. We've got our flathead, which we can now dredge in a bit of this rice flour. I love catching flathead, they're one of my favourite species to catch, but I guess if you need to get them in quantity, it's the commercial guys who you've got to rely yeah, on to, exactly. to bring them into the fish markets. For the kind of need that Sydney chefs have and you know our restaurant has, we do need those guys to bring in this kind of stuff. So these chips are looking great, they're taking a bit of colour. I'm going to go with this flathead. Now you've always got to be careful putting things into hot oil. Make sure you've got a nice coating. So if you hold it by one of the pieces, that you've separated at the top, and I'll okay. go at it with two hands, just so that nothing gets stuck together. And then we can lower him in like that, wait for the oil to, to take. Fantastic. And that'll probably take, on this stove, I suppose, around eight minutes, I imagine, okay. just with it being a little bit off the pace. Fish and chips. Looks delicious, really excited about this. I think it's a rare opportunity to have a fish this fresh out of the water and it goes straight in and, and we're about to try something pretty special, I reckon. Yeah, looking good. Always got the other one if I need to. We're gonna grab these out. Wow, look at that. So we're just draining these off well. Always good to set it over a wire rack if you've got one, instead of a paper towel. If it sits on paper towel, the oil goes in the paper towel, then it's still sitting in oil. Wow, this looks amazing. Have a look at that fishing. I can't yeah. believe it. And we'll go straight away with some salt. This is just nice sea salt flakes. And you can see what's happened to this batter is vodka alcohol is so much higher as a percentage than beer. Okay. So it burns off that much faster. And then you're able to get something crisper and a little bit more volcanic, I suppose. Right, so, this looks magnificent. And we put some of these chips down. And then okay. we're just gonna put lashings of this tartare sauce on the side, I think. And that's probably the best way to eat. Whoa. Blue spotted flathead and Sebago potato chip. Something that's quite underutilised as well, blue spot. It's always the duskies that we hear about and the more glamorous. But um, when they're fresh, they're, there's nothing better. So. Nothing better. And, and look at that. That is just amazing. Well done, champion. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Cool. Let's get into it. Oh. Try that. Look at that. That is fantastic. That juicy. 
hear that crunch. Wow. Yeah, I know. Wow. I have to try one of these, these chips as well.